Hey, yeah, sorry, I know I'm a little late to this party, but I want to talk about Microsoft's new project, Volterra, because it's got me kind of excited, but I have a lot of concerns, because I feel like we've kind of seen this before from Microsoft, but, well, let's talk about it. So for anybody unfamiliar with Project Volterra, at Microsoft's recent keynote where they did their whole build event, that was kind of their developer-focused thing, they announced a developer transition kit based on ARM called Project Volterra, and it's basically like a black Mac Mini with a Microsoft logo on the top made out of ocean plastic. Hopefully ocean plastic that's more nice to touch than the mouse they made out of ocean plastic, which I got a chance to use and hated every minute of it. <laughs> Overall, it's an interesting piece of kit. I don't know if it's actually gonna be customer facing and they did mention that it was stackable. I don't know if it's stackable because you can run it in nodes or if it's stackable the same way that the Mac Minis are stackable, which is basically just, yes, you can stack them. The port layout's also pretty nice. You have some buttons along with USB-C along one side, and then on the back you have Ethernet, which I'm hoping is 10 gig, but I'm not really holding my breath. You also have some USB-A, and then a mini display port, which recently in a video where I was working on a 2009 MacBook made of plastic, I thanked Microsoft for keeping that port alive for so long so that I could still buy adapters for it. You can check the video out right over there, but it's just weird to still see this port around. I thought Microsoft got rid of it when they moved the Surface lineup over to Type-C, but I don't know, I guess maybe it's for developers, so they have like port options, but I don't know why Type-C wouldn't be able to do that either. It, anyway, whatever, it's there. Overall, I do like the design. I've always been kind of a fan of Microsoft's industrial design, because like when I used to sell Surfaces at Best Buy, I would tell people, if you don't want a Mac, but you want that quality of a Mac, the Surface is the best option, and that's true. Microsoft basically makes the MacBooks of the Windows world, and while their internal hardware has been kind of a little iffy because of Intel's sort of slow advance in improving thermals, the actual exterior design was great, and hopefully with this developer kit, maybe we'll see the design start to take advantage of maybe a system that is better at thermals, specifically ARM. Yeah, this is an ARM-based system. It's gonna be running on some sort of Qualcomm chip. My guess is probably a Snapdragon 8 something Gen 3. And it's kind of neat to see that Microsoft's actually, presumably, properly investing in making their system able to be run on ARM, which gives me some hope because I'd love to be able to use Boot Camp again, but with their exclusivity thing with Qualcomm, I don't know if that's gonna happen. But something that was said during that event made me realize that it does actually seem like they want to get things rolling in the direction of the ARM platform is that they have all their developer tools, Visual C, C++, Visual Studio, all that, moved to ARM natively, which is a huge step and one of the reasons why I think that they actually have a bigger investment in the ARM platform than they did beforehand. And they also have a tool that is translating 64-bit standard x86 programs over to ARM, which is really cool, it means you can still run x86 programs on ARM and they can be 64-bit. And the reason why that's important is because I keep referring back to when they tried before, and when they tried before, they made the Surface Pro X, and that was an ARM-based system that could only run x86 programs at 32-bit, meaning that you had an older version of a program, a worse version of a program, and generally, the performance was just terrible in general. Like, it was funny to see Microsoft's first stab at ARM because it was terrible. And when Apple stepped into the ring with their first ARM setup, the performance of some programs on Apple's ARM architecture while being translated was faster than it was on an x86 system because the ARM chip was just that powerful. And it kind of put Apple above everybody else, at least in terms of the general performance of an ARM chip in a regular computer. So seeing that Microsoft is actually investing in this overall setup of developer transition kits with all the tools already moved over to work natively with ARM and a translator so that x86 programs can run on this chip presumably fairly well, it gives me a lot of hope for this platform. Like I know for a lot of people who've watched this channel before, you think that I'm just an Apple guy, and I am, but I'm actually very excited to see this because it means that potentially Apple's gonna have some competition in the market. And when there's competition in the market, we as the consumer win. If Microsoft really starts running up the heels of Apple, then Apple's gonna have to take some further steps ahead, and that's exciting. However, I mentioned that I had some concerns, and the main one for me, is in regards to the developers and the other PC manufacturers. Because here's the thing, Apple had an advantage when they decided to move their platform to ARM because they make the hardware that runs the software. And the software 
runs the programs developers make for the Mac. So if Apple says, hey, developers, we're gonna move our entire platform over to ARM and it's gonna all run natively, you've gotta move your application over or it's gonna be running translated off of something that's not gonna be as high performing because it's not optimized for this system. And in a few years, there are going to be no x86 Macs left. So move to ARM or die, basically. Microsoft doesn't have that advantage. So even if they moved their entire Surface lineup over to an ARM platform today and had Windows ready to run natively on ARM today, they still license Windows out to so many other manufacturers. And even if another manufacturer decides to go and say, hey, we're gonna do what you did and run on ARM, the x86 platform is still gonna be around because AMD and Intel are both still huge players in the game of processor manufacturing and they both use x86. And because of that, it's the cheaper option, at least for now. It's the most commonly known programming style, at least for now. And for a lot of developers, it's the easiest route. It's just, hey, there's a handful of computers that run on ARM that we can make our program for if we want to, but the translator seems to be doing that, so why bother? Let's just keep making things for x86, and unfortunately, that's exactly what happened with the Surface Pro X. Microsoft kind of pushed it out there and said, hey, here's an ARM-based version of Windows running on an ARM-based Surface, and there were only really a handful of optimized apps, and most of them came from the Microsoft App Store, and most of them were the ones that Microsoft converted to be optimized for ARM. So with Microsoft giving the user, fortunately giving the user, the benefit of choice in their machines, it's also kind of crippling their ability to actually make a massive change the same way Apple did, because Apple makes the Mac, and they can change their entire platform over to ARM, and the developers who have a large chunk of their user base on a Mac have to move it over. And so they do. And that's why there has been a massive influx of updated programs to run on ARM on the Mac. Windows, on the other hand, gives the user the benefit of choice, which is good, but it also means that when Microsoft tries to make a huge push for something like ARM in this market, there's really not gonna be any incentive for the developers to try it out. That's my main concern is that this is another really, really cool piece of hardware and another really good attempt at Microsoft to use what is now being seen as a viable alternative to x86 processors. But at the end of the day, if the developers don't hop on board and depending on cost, why would they? It's just going to die off just like the Surface Pro X did, which I guess technically the Surface Pro X isn't dead, but it's definitely not a good option for anybody looking to get a Surface device that's gonna get work done. I don't know, that's my thought. It's one of the first Microsoft-based videos I've done in a while, and so I just wanted to kind of express the fact that as an Apple user, I don't hate Microsoft, and the idea that they're potentially trying to catch up to Apple or at least compete with Apple is really exciting to me, but I've seen this before with their other ARM-based platform and what the developers did because they just didn't see the real incentive to moving things, so that's my concern. Either way, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Leave a comment down below letting me know what you guys think. Do you think that Microsoft may actually be able to pull this ARM transition off and get it into the market as an alternative to x86, or do you think it's gonna die off just like the Surface Pro X is slowly doing? I'm curious, let me know. Apart from that, make sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss any other content like this, and uh, I'll see you all in the next video. Make sure to be there and have a good one.